Essa morena e tu pala com barco Como ela é porreta, tem a pele de dente E a língua de pimenta, ela guerreira de oi A raia do terreiro Essa menina taca no tambor Pra tocar a noite inteira Até piripa faz do papo que ela é mandinqueira Tá com tudo de papo, todos ficam de bobeira Vinha calado que eu tapei Quando quando vi maninha requebrar Vinha contando os meus caramiguá Naquela quarta-feira Noite de lua, capoeira, rua, mas um afiliado de Xangô Fiquei enfeitiçado de amor, levei uma rasteira Essa morena do balacobaco, como ela é porreta Tem a pele de tem a língua de pimenta Ela é guerreira de oi, a rainha do guerreiro Essa menina traga no tambor, batuca a noite inteira Até periba faz do papo que ela é mandinqueira Tá com tudo e os babudos ficam de bobeira Vinha calado que tá peiado quando vi maninha requebrar Vinha contando os meus caramiguá naquela quarta-feira Noite de lua, capoeira, rua, mas um afilhado de Xangô Fiquei enfeitiçado de amor, levei uma rasteira Ninguém discorda que a tinhosa tem o dom É tudo seu e mais ninguém coloca a mão, mandei ela é solteira, vem que eu vi choradeira Eu bato palmas derretido de paixão Ela acha graça e agradece, só que não dá trela Direito dela, pisa meu Quando quer 
Hot do bote da botocuda, precisando de dinheiro. Com farinheiro, tô na luta, mesmo assim vou cavucando meu quinho pra terminar no curufim. Tô capengando, mas não caio de piaça. Tô capengando, mas não caio por amor. Tô do que nem paldax corado na barriguda, comandando o carinheiro. Canavieiro, maconheiro, querubino, socado, nem tô cheio desse prato de capim. Se dou um passo, desfaço logo em seguida Da minha vida o compasso me tropeçou Oi, oi, oi Tô na balanda e na charanga pelo rio Como se engano, quero ir sem compromisso de chegar Tô capengando, firme com a pega na areia Só o sangue pela veia que ainda tem me navegar Renga, pendenga, minha quenga, meu Brasil Como se engano, quero ir com o feitiço que pegou Tô capengando, feio igual cachorro mago Mas me vim com esse estrago só no ano que passou Eu vou, não vou, eu vou, não vou Tô capengando, mas não caio de piaça, tô capengando, mas não caio por amor. Bambu que nega hot no pote da botocuda, precisando de dinheiro. Por farinheiro, tô na luta, mesmo assim vou cavucando meu quinhão pra terminar no gurufi. Tô capengando, mas não caio de piaça, tô capengando, mas não caio por amor. Tô do que nem pataco escorado na barriguda, comandando o galinheiro. Canavieiro, maconheiro, querubino, não sou gado, não é tô jeito, esse prato de capim. Se dou um passo, desfaço logo em seguida Da minha vida, com passo, me tropeçou Oi, oi, oi Tô na balanga, na charanga, pelo rio 
Vamos sim, eu não quero isso, compromisso de chegar Tô capengando, firme com a prego na areia Só o sangue pela veia que ainda tem me navegar Renga, pendenga, minha quenga, meu base com sim Eu não quero ir contra o feitiço que pegou Tô capengando, feio e com a cachorro mago Mas me vivo nesse estrago só no ano que passou Eu vou, não vou, eu vou, não vou Caranguejeira na 
cabelha da viola Carambola no meu zóio do catador Até esconde a lua, a lua não me ateia Os palmos de areia tá levando meu amor Meu camará, eu tô soltando pela goela Essa saudade da donzela, tô de ano a minha dor Meu zóio tá se derretendo como for Minhas lágrimas de ser amor Tá com candela marejou oh.
Você, você, você me pediu cem mil réis pra comprar um suaré e um tamborim. O orcante anda barato pra cachorro e um cato lá no morro não é tão caro assim. Música 
Natalie Cressman and Ian Facchini. She's a trombonist, vocalist, and songwriter based in San Francisco. And he's a composer, guitarist, and singer from Prasalia based in Berkeley, California. Together, they blend their love of Brazilian songbook, jazz, impressionism, and sophista pop songcraft into a unique and modern sound. Your music features lyrics in Brazilian accented Portuguese, French, and English with tight two-part vocal harmonies accompanied by trombone and acoustic guitar your arrangements give way to a larger orchestral sound and i've had so much fun digging into your catalog i wanted to learn a little bit about you each individually we'll start with you ian you're brazilian born based in berkeley california you've gone on to create your own music exploring the traditions of your brazilian heritage you're also an educator on faculty at the california jazz conservatory in berkeley and at california brazil camp when did you decide you wanted to deep dive into your roots and pursue a career sharing the music of your culture um so like you said i was born in brazil but i moved to the bay area when i was about eight years old and kind of had lost touch with my roots a little bit until i was a teenager around 15 my mom forced me to go to the california <laughs> brazil camp which as you said i teach at now um i was a little reluctant to go and I got so inspired by the music there and especially by the music of Ginga, mm. who was a teacher there. And ever since, I've been devoting my time to Brazilian music. Wow. And you also have some Brazilian music in your growing up. Natalie, you come from a musical family. Your mother, Sandy Cressman, is a jazz vocalist who immersed herself deeply into the traditions of Brazilian music. So I'm sure you grew up hearing a lot of it. And your father, Jeff Cressman, is a recording engineer and trombonist. You've gone on to write your own music and collab with many well-known figures in rock, funk, jazz, jam, and beyond. Can you talk about your journey connecting back to the Brazilian music you grew up around? Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of a coming home to those early influences. I moved to New York when I was 18, you know, had a very steady diet of jazz and, and mm. modern jazz. Um, and then I also started playing in the jam band scene um, through Trey Anastasio's band and, you know, explored a lot of music there. And then my mom also not dragged me. I was very willingly taken to the <laughs> Brazil camp as a 20 something year old. And there was Ian um, in Ginga's class and we started playing his music oh. and uh, realized, wow, like this duo of guitar and trombone we haven't heard before. It feels really unique, and it kind of pulled me back into that world that I always loved, but, um, you know, with deeper meaning and, yeah, kind of not looked back since. Yeah, your own personal, you know, connection now, too. And now you both are very sought-out musicians in your craft and have become very in-demand collaborators. You just told me you guys met at that camp, which is so sweet. Did you start working together at that point when y'all were around like teenagers or yeah well and when I went I was I think 25 years old and yeah and at the time I was living in New York still so we were sending music back and forth Ian writes mostly music he's written some lyrics since then but a lot of times he collaborates with um, Brazilian lyricists and he had a couple songs that he's like I think this song could sound cool with English lyrics do you want to give it a shot and um, that became like the title track of our first album. Um, and so we started collaborating kind of remotely and mm. then um, just started doing more and more music together. Yeah, I love that. And it's, it's got the Brazilian flair, but it's also a lot of other things. It's like a blend. We have a radio, a radio show here on Kubo called Brazilian Fantasy. It's led by our host, Anir, who's from Rio, Rio de Janeiro. And she was telling me that she started the show because she wanted people to know that it was bossa nova and so much more. Now that y'all are playing this Brazilian music, what's the scene like, the modern Brazilian music scene? Um, there's definitely some bossa nova going around, of course, yeah. but... There's a lot of um, modern kind of jazz, Brazilian jazz, as well as all the kind of roots, if you will, styles uh, making a big appearance all over the globe, like Foja. Mm. It's a dance music from the northeast of Brazil. Ooh. It's like a couple's dance, and there's tons of festivals all over Europe, oh. and uh, it's becoming really popular. And a lot of the music I write is really influenced by northeastern music. And um, shoru, which is one of the oldest styles of Brazilian 
music is still really popular all over the world. There's lots of little groups like all over the country and all over the world. Um, it's pretty cool. Everywhere we go, there's a little Brazilian community for sure. Oh, that's so cool. Natalie, I wanted to ask you a question. I did, um, I did a little bit of research. I was curious about the trombone's role in Brazilian music. So I did a quick search and a blog that you wrote for your website came up. I was like, okay, this is perfect. <laughs> I read it that you were, um, you know, that a big part of why you started writing for the project of your own was out of the desire to make the most out of what is possible for the trombone. This project challenged you to kind of reimagine what your trombone would sound like in Brazilian, the Brazilian music landscape. Can you expand on this, like your findings? Yeah, I mean, there's so many ways that to integrate the trombone. I mean, it's historically been a solo vo voice in a lot of different classic Brazilian music, like old school samba and some choro. Um, but because our music is kind of a hybrid of all those different worlds, um, it leaves it super open what role the trombone can play. So sometimes I'm like playing the role of like a bass player because we don't have one and mm -hmm. I'm supporting Ian as an accompanist sometimes. Um, other times, like in the recording process, I create like a choir of trombones that's kind of almost like a string section. Mm. Um, so it's been really fun to explore like the different ways to use the, the kind of tonal vibe of the trombone whether it's a melodic voice a supporting voice or like a choir ensemble um voice so i have so much fun just and i think the music kind of directs me into like oh this song needs this and this song is you know you gotta maybe keep it more simple and yeah. just have a single trombone voice it's a nice um contrast to the vocal lines which are really tight and really like uh kind of quick which brings me to your album the one that i've listened to um auburn whisper so i'm also on a show called influence it's all about this cross-pollination of jazz and other genres and mm. you know latin and brazilian other genres so i have a lot of fun and yours is right in that pocket this album which was written and recorded during the pandemic released in April. April of 22 really piqued my interest because of those influences. Like as I'm listening, I'm like, okay, that's like a little bit of like 1960s folk. I heard some dreamy Beatles like harmonies, of course, the traditional Brazilian rhythms and all of this under this modern twist. Can you tell us about this album, the recording process, the reception? You want to go first? Um, sure. Why not? <laughs> Um, so, yeah, we were kind of um, stuck in the pandemic at the beginning of the pandemic, like everybody else, without much to do. And luckily, we we're with each other and had some time to practice and work on some songs. And like you said, her father, Jeff Cressman, is a great audio engineer. He was in our bubble. So we had that great fortune to just be able to go mess around in the studio, record. And I kind of convinced Natalie to create that trombone choir sound on all the tracks. We did it on one at first, and I was like, we have to do it for every <laughs> track. And she was like, are you sure? I don't think I, I was like, we have to. It's going to be what's going to unify the album. And we were listening, like you said, to a lot of Beatles. Um, yeah, we watched like all of the anthology and everything during that time, yes. listening to a lot of Frank Sinatra, mm. like Nelson Riddle arrangements and a lot of those influences of stuff that we were listening to definitely came through, uh, as you mentioned, which we're glad that they were noticed. That's awesome. And has it been received really well, like now that it's been out for a year or two? Yeah, I think so. I mean, definitely got some great reviews and yeah. in the kind of jazz publications, which is cool because it's not jazzy jazz. It definitely has those influences um, mm -hmm. and some improvisation. But we're, you know, grateful that it was kind of welcomed into that world. Um, and yeah, it's really fun playing the stuff live because, you know, we can't recreate that exact sound of all those trombones going on at once. So, you know, there's all these kind of alternate versions that have come about by just playing the, the record out live in front of people. That's so cool. I want to talk about the uh, single that I saw that you released early February. It's in collaboration with Ginga, which you mentioned earlier. Uh, you met when you were like 15 and was a huge mentor. I was reading about his story. My gosh, what a triumphant story. Like he started out loving music as a teen, wasn't able to make a living, decided to practice as a dentist. And then in the late 80s, he was like, I'm going to go full in. And now he's an internationally known artist. Uh, is this the first time you three worked together as a trio? What were the sessions like making the music with him? Well, uh, 
so we've known Genga for many years, Ian, since he was 15 and, and me since that um, first camp that I went to when I was 25, I want to say. Mm -hmm. And he's yeah been a mentor fig figure to Ian and, and to me a little bit in these recent years and a huge source of our inspiration for all the music we play. Um, and yeah, we usually spend a week out of the year with him at the California Brazil camp and kind of religiously go to his classes because he is a great storyteller and really shares his songs in such a personal way. Um, so this was our first time recording with him, but we knew we really wanted to make this album because it's kind of obvious if you know Ginga's music, how, how big of an impact he has had on our sound. And so to kind of, you know, honor that and, and, you know, show all these beautiful songs to people that might not have heard of his music. So, um, we had, I think two days in the studio with him. So we had to kind of get cranking pretty quickly but it was kind of spontaneously very magical what we were able to do in a short amount of time and um and yeah we were in the redwoods um the studio that we found was like in the middle of the redwoods that you could oh. see from the recording booth so it kind of had the same vibe that of that kind of magical first meeting and so it made us feel very at home and very inspired to to make the music a lot of your videos are in nature which mm -hmm. is such a you know symbiotic feeling so in those sessions it birthed that single and uh, what's the name of that single in february yeah la vagin du concession um, which is a collaboration that ian wrote the music and showed it to Ginga just to kind of see what he thought. And he was like instantly struck with the inspiration to write the lyrics. Um, and he's mostly known as a composer, like writing the music. So this is one of those rare special moments where he really became a lyricist for this. Um, and he's had a couple moments like that, like two or three or even four songs with Ian, where Ian's just kind of showing him what he's working on and he gets inspired to write lyrics. And Magic. Yeah. Wow, that's <laughs> so cool. So in those sessions, it birthed that single and it also birthed a single that's releasing mid-March and the album that's coming out in April. Is that all part of that Ginga project? Absolutely. Yeah. So the whole album is 14 songs. They're all um, songs where some Ginga has some part in the, the construction of the music. So mostly songs that he composed the music for, but also uh, three songs where he's the lyricist. And uh, what do you want to say about that? That sounds right to me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I just play the guitar, make the music. <laughs> well, geez, I'm really excited to hear it. Um, any other um, things that you're looking forward to with this next 2024 year past April that you want to talk about? Or is it just kind of focusing on the album right now, getting that ready? Yeah, the rest of the year is kind of a mystery. I mean, we've just been kind of working towards getting this music out, yeah. but we do have a lot of original stuff that hasn't been recorded yet. So probably we'll get into the studio before the end of the year and start making the next one. But yeah, we're just excited to play um, some of the stuff from the Ginga record out live. Um, we got a big tour in April and we get to open for Snarky Puppy for four shows. Ooh. So that's going to be really cool because that's a kind of a different audience than we're used to reaching. Um, nice. So that's basically it, though. How exciting. Well, thank you so much, Natalie and Ian. Like, it's been so fun digging into your music. I'm looking forward to your album coming out in April and uh, keeping an eye on your sound. It's so unique. And I love that it brings that Brazilian music into the modern times and it's kind of a blended sound. So thank you so much. Y'all are great. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Abby. Thank oh, you, guys. Yes. Of course.